So we're in the season of Advent. Advent is that wonderful time of preparation. And if you're like me and our family, we uh, spent that days after Thanksgiving putting away all of the, the pumpkin dishes and all of the turkey things away and pulled out all the Christmas decorations. The tree is up, the lights are on, the, the, the um, stockings are ready to be hung with care and, and uh, the lights are on the outside. And much like we are in the church here today with the tree up and the lights are on, and, and uh, we like to consider that we are ready for Christmas and it puts us in that season that since, you know, I'm already listening to Christmas songs on the radio. Anybody else with me out there? Anybody else doing that same thing? Yeah, it's, it's fun to do that. It's fun to get ready. It's fun to be prepared for Christmas. We've already bought some presents. I'm sure you have too. We haven't gotten to the wrapping stage of that yet, but I, I know that that will happen. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing that happens in our society whenever we shift from uh, pumpkin spice latte over to peppermint mocha, right? It's like this, this amazing thing happens. Uh, except if you're Pastor Heather, she is only pumpkin spice. Just hint, hint. It's disgusting. <laughs> oh, kidding is that. We we really do enjoy getting ready for Christmas, don't we? I mean, we we get a kick out of it. I mean, there's a lot of traditions that we do. Cookies come out, different different uh, grandma's cookie maker things and stuff, or old recipes that we bring out, pictures. And our family, um, uh, every time that we set it up now, has become traditional where we watch every year. We videotape our kids coming down the stairs since we've been here. And so we watch this transition year after year after year after year when they come down the stairs, bounding down the stairs. And it's, and, and it's enjoyable, and we're waiting for that day to come when we can make the next recording and then watch it again next year. These, these type of preparations that we do is kind of fun. It puts us in that spirit and type of that, in that mindset. And we're ready for Christmas morning. And Christmas morning, of course, is about the coming of the Christ child. Advent is about that. But it's also about more than that, isn't it? Advent's also about the coming of Christ at the end of all things. How do we prepare for that? Do we do that with the same energy, um, love, laughter, excitement that we do for like Christmas morning? Probably not the same way, is it? I mean, I'll be honest, that's not, I don't think about that as much as I'm thinking about Christmas Day, spending it with family and doing all the things and Christmas Eve with the silent night and stuff. There's a certain amount of preparation though that we are called to participate in, not just during the season of Advent, but on a daily basis. Jesus is gonna talk to his disciples today in our gospel lesson. And it's from the Gospel of Mark. And this is happening right before Jesus is arrested and taken away, okay? So he is uh, uh, before the Last Supper in the Gospel of Mark. And this is called the mini apocalypse in, in the Gospel of Mark because he is talking about the end times. And Jesus says the sun's going to darken and there's going to be all this sound and there's going to be earthquakes and the heavens are going to be moving around and stuff and all these bad things are going to take place. And when that starts to happen, you know it's getting close. But you don't know the time or the date. You don't know when it's exactly going to happen. It's like the fig tree, he calls it. And then he uses this comparison. And he says, it's like this man goes away on a journey and he leaves the slaves in charge of the house to do all the things that they're supposed to do. And the doorkeeper's supposed to do what he's supposed to do as well. And then we don't know when the master's going to come back. So be alert. Stay awake. Keep watch. Stay prepared for when he should come back. So what do you imagine those slaves would be doing or that doorkeeper would be doing? Do you think as soon as the master leaves the house, they turn into a 17-year-old kid with the kid, mom and dad gone off on vacation? No. They stay actively involved in what they've been tasked to do, what they have been called to do. They are faithful to their calling. Jesus is teaching his disciples in this moment to be faithful to God as God has always been faithful to to them. To be prepared is to be faithful to God, as God has always been faithful to them. This is not something that Jesus invented on the spot. This is something that our biblical witness uses over and over and over again. You can see it with the judges, you can see it with the kings, with the prophets, with the priests. They're always telling people, return to God, be faithful to God, as God has been faithful to you. And time and time again, people turn away from this. And they're always calling them back. Return to God. 
be faithful to God as God has been faithful to you. The Messiah is coming. All throughout the Old Testament, they're waiting for the Messiah. One of the readings that's missing in our, in our lessons today is the appointed psalm. And it's Psalm 80. And you can look it up in your, bullet, in your, in your Bible. It's also in the hymnal as well. Psalm 80. I'm going to sing it for you. It's my version of it that I wrote years ago, but it's Psalm 80. And in this psalm, the psalmist is basically calling us to the same thing. To return to God, turn toward God, let our faithfulness be to God like God's faithfulness is to us. That's how we're ready, getting ready for the Messiah. Because all of the psalms is like this beautiful prayer book that has been written for people who are trying their best to be faithful to the teachings of God, to be faithful to the Torah, to do exactly what they have been asked to do, because they are waiting for the Messiah to come. They believe it's going to happen in their lifetime. They're not thinking, well, gosh, we've been here for a millennium. I doubt it's going to happen on Tuesday. No, they are literally wondering if it's going to happen right now. And so everything they did was sacred. Everything they did mattered a great deal. And so their faithfulness was paramount. But the psalmist is calling them, remember Return to that. Your God has been with you the whole time. This messianic figure, this kingdom, this kingdom is coming. Return to God. Restore that faithfulness. God is like this amazing shepherd that has been watching over the entirety of the flock. And God is so powerful. It's like sitting between the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. And God has been there before all of them, guiding them, leading them, and taking care of them. God takes care of even the enemies that they have in front of them to not even worry about them. God has been faithful to you throughout all the generations. Return to God. And so the psalmist is crying out, restore us. Restore us. Make your face shine on us. Let us be saved. Help us to be faithful again. Help us to be faithful to you again. And then the psalmist starts to describe the Messiah figure, that there's this vine that rises up, out of Egypt, this root of Jesse, this, this, this Lebanon, this oak, this, this huge mighty tree, the roots go everywhere. It's larger than the river bends. This, this amazing Messiah will come and will call us all home. So watch over this one because the son that you have raised is going to be struck down. But this is the one that we worship. This is the one that we adore. This is the one our eyes are on. Help us to be faithful as God has been faithful to us. So today, our Advent, we're turning back to the psalm, Psalm 80, as we listen to the psalmist sing. Hear us, O shepherd Israel, you lead Joseph like a flock, and you sit between the cherubims shine forth before Benjamin. Awaken your might. Come and save us, O oh Lord, God Almighty. How long? Your anger stay, you may them drink bowls of tears, enemies seek us as their prey, awaken your mind, come and save us, restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. You brought a vine of Egypt. You drove out nations to plant and you cleared the ground for its roots, it shoots far as the river bends. Awaken your might. Come and 
and save us. Restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God. May your face shine on us that we may be saved. Watch over this vine, the sun you have raised, the root you have planted will be cut down in flames. Restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine on us that we should be saved. Your hand rests on him, the sun that you have raised, then we will not turn away. We will call on your name. Restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God. Make your face shine on us that we